A seemingly innocent charity is masking something far more sinister. Behind its benevolent facade lies a cesspool of corruption, manipulation, and deceit. Nobody believes you when you say you don't know how much money your family has got from the Wii group. Again, how much money total of your brother, mother, and spouse received from this organization? How much? That information has been publicly shared, but I will highlight. Well, then tell me what mother, it is. Uh, my mother How much? Has, uh, has just the dollar figure uh, throughout her life. The dollar uh, figure, in Prime various Minister. Various ways and is uh, proud How much? of the work that she's done, and I'm proud of her. How much? Uh, I'm looking for a can, dollar figure. We can, we can get that number for you if you like. It's been in, out in the media. It's been in the media, but you don't know it. I don't have it in front of me. Quite you don't frankly, know how much your family has received from this organization, which you tried to give a half billion dollars, really. The Trudeau Foundation was created in 2001 in honor of Pierre Elliott Trudeau. I'm, I'm worried about living in a town that's uh, full of people with guns running around in it. Are you? Have they done anything to you? Have they pushed you around or anything? They pushed around friends of mine. Yeah? What were your friends doing? Trying to take pictures of them. Aha! The foundation supports academic studies and doctoral students to fund studies about public policy, climate change, as well as the cohesion of refugees, among other topics, but the common theme is around sociology and how that affects our economy. Now, if I'm thinking out loud here for a second, it kind of sounds a lot like the World Economic Forum mandates. I uh, respect uh, China's achievements which are tremendous over the last uh, over 40 years. I think it's um, a role model for many countries. Uh, we should leave it to each country uh, to make its own decision what system it wants to adapt. And I think we should be very careful in imposing systems. But the Chinese model is certainly a very attractive model. For Are we witnessing the unraveling of Canada's largest scandal? The only two people he will allow to investigate foreign interference are from the Trudeau Foundation. <laughs> no engagement except for intelligence reports show that Beijing gave $140,000 to the Trudeau Foundation to influence him, a donation facilitated and signed off on by his own brother. And now no engagement except that he hosts them for meetings <laughs> in his own office. Was there no other office space available anywhere in Ottawa, Mr. Speaker? Beware, because what you're about to discover might change your entire perception about Canada and our current Prime Minister. Now, the quickest way to find out if the Trudeau Foundation is actually legit or if it's a disguise for something greater, we have to go right to the money. The money says everything. We have to see who donates and how much. Now, if you download the PDF on the Trudeau website, you can see all about the donors, but let's be real. We're not getting the entire full story. Again, the Trudeau Foundation isn't a publicly owned charity. It's not a government charity. And even if it were, we know in Canada that we can't access a lot of files or a lot of information about really anything because Canada is really kept secret when it comes to the Justice Department, when it comes to crimes, when it comes to data about police, about health, about education. Canada is kept private. Now, I don't know if you really knew that because I didn't really either until we started doing business in the USA. We're moving our business down there and we're potentially even moving down there full time. I can tell you from working in the economy, you can get information on pretty much anything. Anybody can go to any police department and get the body cam footage of a police officer from a specific day, from a specific traffic stop. You can get information about legal cases. You can get any information. And this is called the Freedom of Information Act. You can go to any police station or public official office in the U.S. and do a FOIA request, a Freedom of Information Act request. And again, you can obtain pretty much any information about anything. And even I can tell you personally, on a personal note, from doing real estate investing, I can find out easily who owns what property, how much they paid for it, when they bought it. I can see their mortgage documents. I can see if they're 30 days late on their mortgage, 60 days late, 90 days late. I can see if they have a registered lien on the property. Pretty much anybody can see anything about anybody's house. As long as you have the address or the person's name, you can see their entire life when it comes to their real estate. And again, if they were on a traffic stop or convicted of a crime, you can pull up all the data, all the transcripts from the court 
records, anything is what I'm trying to say. Which again, if you didn't know that, which I didn't know that until recently, that is mind blowing. And as a Canadian, I don't know how I feel about that, honestly. It's a total invasion of privacy. Like I said, anybody can see anything about anybody's home. I don't know. That's kind of weird as a Canadian, but I understand why they do it. See, America isn't perfect, and they know that. Even though they act like they're king shit and they're the best country on earth, even though they are, <laughs> they act like they're untouchable. But one thing you can't fault them for is the majority of their industries and the criminal justice system is fully transparent. In Canada, everything is private. So again, we like that in Canada, but when it comes down to finding out about companies, about charities like the Trudeau Foundation, you can't get nothing. So again, as much as we'd like to see who the donors are, we're not getting none of that information. But we can speculate, and we don't even have to speculate. It's been documented full well from leaks in the Liberal cabinet that Trudeau is getting money from China. It's not anything new. It's not scandalous. We know for a fact. Now, on the website, on the Trudeau Foundation, it says the biggest donors are companies like RBC and all these big banks and all these companies. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's just a facade. I get why those kind of companies would lend to this. It makes sense. But I want to read you something from a National Post article from somebody in Trudeau's cabinet who said this. I realized that a Chinese association was communicating with the employees of the Trudeau Foundation. And not to talk about conferences in China, Fournier said. They were giving clear directives on what needed to appear on the receipts issued by the foundation. And I found that troubling. So basically, China, lobbyists from China, Chinese companies, etc. Again, we'll never know exactly who. But China in a whole is giving money to the Trudeau Foundation. And they were caught saying, you can't put... China on the receipt. You can't put the Chinese company or where it came from on the receipt. You got to put something else. Urban Homes Realty Inc. I don't know. Put that on the invoice. It's just the company. It's just the company. This leak was like, no, the money was from China. And they asked us directly to change the invoice. China. China. You go over to China. 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 China, 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 you take China. 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 I love them. China. So again, how much of that is going on that we'll never know about, but we can speculate with a lot of confidence is definitely going on. Now, if we're going to speculate, what would be the motive for Chinese government or big companies in China to donate money to the Trudeau Foundation, Justin Trudeau, who's obviously in power of the country, that's a conflict on its own. But anyway, what would be the motive for someone to do something like that? Well, we know that China likes to park a lot of money into Canada, specifically real estate. A lot of Chinese own real estate in Toronto. And we've gone over this on my channel a bunch of times. As a real estate investor and entrepreneur, I can tell you one of the best investments on earth is real estate. I'm sure anybody with a brain watching this can understand that, has seen real estate values double, triple, quadruple since the 50s. And you know, every 10 years, real estate goes up in the long term. That's, that's not a secret. But China, see, has a dirty economy. It's a communist country. And getting money out of that country is very, very hard. But if they can invest it in good assets like real estate where it holds its value and appreciates, it's a way of washing their money. See, you can't take money out of China. If you're a Chinese citizen and you want to bring money to the US or to Canada and take your cash out of your bank account, it's very hard and very costly. And in a lot of cases, they just won't let you. But if you're buying assets... You know, it's, it's easier. So people are washing their money. They're buying a piece of real estate, holding onto it for a year, selling it. Then now that money stays in Canada. In, in a sense, they wash their money. That's how they can get the money out of China and then have the cash to do what they actually want to do, whatever they want to do. Now, the thing is, Chinese people, Chinese millionaires and billionaires aren't flipping real estate in a matter of months or a year to wash their money. They're beyond that point. They're thinking generationally about their money. So they're buying condos or buying houses in Toronto, leaving them empty, which we know about because Toronto wants to tax these empty vacant homes because they know there's so many of them. A new year and a new tax for some Toronto homeowners. Starting this year, letting a house sit empty will cost you. A new vacant home tax is now in effect. Homeowners must declare whether or not their properties are empty or face hefty fines. The hope is this will open up more spaces for new buyers and renters to help curb the city's housing crisis. See, these Chinese millionaires, they don't care 
about putting a tenant in it and making sure the property cash flows and carries itself. They don't care. The reason why they're investing in real estate is to wash their money and they're thinking about passing that money down to their family in generations for the next kids and the kids after that. That's the plan of these rich millionaires from Saudi Arabia, from China, etc. They're not thinking like you and I do. How can I flip this home in five years and make a hundred grand? They're thinking, how can I pass this money down and keep it away from communist China and keep our family rich forever? Now, the next issue I want to come back to is the lack of transparency, especially for a big, you know, public charity, a foundation, something that's supposed to be good. It should have much more transparency into who the donors are, where the money is, where is it sitting? And again, like I said, you can go on the website and download their nice little PDF package that's been audited by a third party and it shows how much money's in the account. We, how do we know if that's true or not? We don't know. We'll never know. Unless we get more transparency in our government, more into foundations and charities, we need to see more. Now, let's talk about another conspiracy theory, the Great Reset. Why would people want to buy off Justin Trudeau through his foundation? You know, you can't give money to him directly, obviously, now that he's prime minister. You got to go around it. Well, let's see. If you want to draw the lines and the parallels to the World Economic Forum, which Trudeau is a part of, and Klaus Schwab said himself. As a young generation, like uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, um, President of, Brez of uh, Argentina and so on, said we penetrate the cabinets. So yesterday I was at a, rece at a reception for Trudeau and I would know that half of this cabinet or even more half of, uh, half of this cabinet are for our uh, actually young global leaders of the world economy right. form. The WEF believes in climate change, believes in DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusivity. It believes in a global economy, right? Globalization rather than a nationalistic approach to a country. Dude, that's what Trudeau's all about. That's what the whole country has been about for the past 10 years. Opening up our borders, letting immigrants come through like crazy, which is not only damaging the economy for Canadians already here, it's also damaging the economy for the new immigrants that were promised such a good life. And when they get here, they realize, wow, it's really expensive to live here. I can't afford rent. My job doesn't pay nearly enough. I have no skills or little skills. I can't afford anything here. I'm going back home. And that's what we're seeing a lot of. Now, another head topic that the World Economic Forum really loves to lean on is surveillance and control. Now, they don't really say it as that, but they come out with the CBDC, right? Rather than using cash or credit cards, they want a ledger system. Everybody's income coming in or out is going to be on a ledger. Everything is traceable. You don't need cash anymore, a cashless society. Things that Trudeau has been dropping hints of here and there about where he wants to take Canada. I mean, we even saw a glimpse of that with the whole trucker protest during COVID and how everybody's bank account got shut down. People that thought, well, if they're shutting down bank accounts, I'm going to donate Bitcoin to the truckers. Can't touch that, right? It's Bitcoin. Can't touch that. Well, Trudeau shut that down as well and got those transactions reversed. So we're definitely heading into a world where we're going to have more surveillance, more control, more about the DEI movement, more focused on climate change, more focused on a globalized world. And the fact that these types of people have already been documented to be donating to the Trudeau Foundation, what does this mean for Canada? What does this mean for our government? What things have to change? I want to hear all about your thoughts in the comments below. Let me know.